Shareholders, shareholders' representatives, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this year's annual shareholders' meeting of your company. Many of you have been part of Daimler community for years. I thank you for that loyalty. Other shareholders have invested in Daimler only recently. In particular, Li Shu Fu's recent acquisition of Daimler shares has attracted public attention and a great deal of speculation. That's why I'd like to start by saying that our talks with Li Shu Fu have so far been very positive. He wants to have a long term involvement with Daimler, and he supports our successful strategy. What's more, China is our most important market. In our future discussions of the automobile business in China, we will be able to include our biggest shareholder. We will also explore the question of whether there are additional opportunities for cooperation. In China, we are open to all possible options that are compatible with the interests of our long-term partner. The bottom line is that Li Shu Fu's acquisition of Daimler shares offers us many new opportunities. And at Daimler, we take advantage of the opportunities that arise from change. That's why we occupy the top spot today. In recent years, we've demonstrated more than once that Daimler can do more. We've achieved more than many would have expected of us. And in some areas, we've even achieved more than we ourselves had planned. With Mercedes-Benz, for example, we wanted to overtake our competitors by 2020. We already achieved that goal in 2016. In 2017, we consolidated our top position and extended our lead. In the past financial year, we increased the Daimler Group's revenue by 7 percent to 164.3 billion euros. Our EBIT grew by 14 percent to 14.7 billion euros, and net profit rose by 24 percent to 10.9 billion. This course of profitable growth is also to your benefit. The proposed dividend has been increased by 40 cents to 3.65 euros per share for a total payout of almost 4 billion. All of this has been made possible only by the untiring hard work of our colleagues at Daimler. I would therefore like to express my heartfelt thanks for their performance and enthusiasm. As you know, we have ambitious plans for the future as well. Daimler is undergoing the biggest transformation in its history. And once again, we're going to demonstrate that Daimler can do more. So we are concentrating on five strategic areas. We're further expanding our core business. We are the driving force in the case fields. We are continuing to develop our corporate culture. We are optimizing our corporate structure. And as we move forward in all of these areas, we are steadily focusing on our customers. I'd like to talk first, first about our core business. This is our economic backbone, which we will strengthen even further. That's why we're investing above all in new products. For instance, in 2018, we will launch more than a dozen new car models. The first of them this year was the new G-Class. It's more practical than ever uh, daily, for daily use and road, and even more effective for off-road driving. On top of that, we've preserved this icon's unique personality. We've sold almost 300,000 G-Class SUVs since 1979, and about 80 percent of them are still on the road today. This success story benefits the Mercedes brand as a whole. The same is true for the A-Class. It has played a major role in the brand's rejuvenation. The new A-Class is now taking the next step. It has an uncompromisingly dynamic design while offering even more comfort. In terms of connectivity, it sets benchmarks not only for the compact segment. Four weeks ago, we presented the new four-door AMG GT in Geneva. With this model, we're opening up the sports wagon segment for customers looking for a car they can use daily without missing the unique performance of a Mercedes AMG. And those are the Mercedes highlights of just the past three months. 
our product offensive, maintaining its fast pace. Advance, the sprinter, is the innovation of the year. The demands placed on Havana are rare as individual as our customers. That's why one ingredient of the sprinter's recipe for success is our ability to offer it in over 1,700 basic variants. In the future, the Sprinter, like the Vito, will also be available as an electric vehicle. You can see it here on stage. But state-of-the-art combustion engines are also helping to further reduce CO2 emissions in road traffic. The diesel engine, in particular, is playing a major role here. It's absolutely clear that we, automotive manufacturers, are responsible for reconciling individual mobility with climate protection and clean air. That's why I'd like to say three things about this topic. First, we are marking, we are making every effort to bring more facts and greater objectivity into the discussion of the diesel engine. Second, we're placing our emphasis on innovation rather than driving prohibitions. We advocate technically, practical, and financially responsible ways to further reduce the emissions of vehicles that are already owned by our customers. The software updates we have announced for more than 3 million vehicles are an effective and comparatively quick solution. On average, they will reduce the vehicle's um, nitrous oxide emissions by 25 to 30 percent. And third, we offer our customers state-of-the-art diesel vehicles. By updating our model range, we will further reduce nitrogen oxide emissions. In the drive system mix of the future, the high-tech diesel engine will not be the problem. It will be a key part of the solution. We are preparing for a mix of drive systems at our production plants. Our goal is to be able to produce every model on every production line, whatever its drive system and its architecture. Today, we already have a global production network in which individual plants help each other out, depending on current demand. In the coming years, we will have new production plants in countries including Poland, Hungary, Russia and China. Our global presence helps us to deal more effectively with the current fluctuations and barriers to trade. As a, as a company, we have to adapt to the prevailing political conditions. At the same time, we are strong advocates of free trade. More than 119,000 men and women work for Daimler outside Germany. Fair and free markets also serve the interests of those colleagues. And that brings me to my second topic, which will be crucial for our future success, case. For a long time, our business model was clearly defined. We develop, build and sell outstanding vehicles. We'll continue to do that, but it's no longer the whole story. Connectivity, autonomous driving, shared mobility and electric mobility are opening up an infinite number of additional opportunities to thrill our customers. Let me give you just a few examples. For more and more customers, connectivity is becoming a strong reason to buy a specific model. That's why our new MBUX infotainment system is being launched at just the right time. Um, even uh, tech media have talked about a new benchmark. MBUX automatically navigates you to your next appointment. It reminds you of your next birthday that's coming up. And thanks to artificial intelligence, it knows what kind of music you like to hear while you drive home from work. The car doesn't merely know its owner, it thinks ahead. For example, if you say, I'm feeling cold, it turns up the temperature. The great thing is that you can speak just as you please. The system even understands dialects. And that is very important for our Swabian engineers. For our truck customers, connectivity is a key competitive advantage. For example, by monitoring and analyzing our truck's vehicle data, data we, can prevent, we can do preventive maintenance. Almost 500,000 Daimler trucks are already online, and that number is rapidly increasing. 
Autonomous driving is developing just as dynamically at Daimler. The experts call our, call our goal level five. That means that a vehicle can drive autonomously anywhere in the world at any time. And that's what we're working on, but we haven't yet achieved that goal. A colleague at Waymo recently said not even human beings have managed to reach level five. Two tragic accidents in the U.S. have triggered a critical discussion about autonomous driving. Our, motiva our motivation is clear. We want to further improve road safety, and that's why we're forging ahead with the development of autonomous driving. It will significantly reduce the number of road accidents. At Daimler, we're doing everything we can to achieve this goal. As a central principle of autonomous driving is redundancy. Everything is safeguarded many times over. We're working with cameras, radar sensors, laser scanners, and highly precise maps. If one system fails, another one will step in. I'm convinced that autonomous driving will change our mobility in a positive way. That also applies to another mega trend in our industry, shared mobility. At Daimler, we initiated the transformation from an automobile manufacturer to a mobility provider about 10 years ago. Almost 20 million people use digital mobility services today, and that's only the beginning. In the future, Daimler and BMW aim to join forces as mobility services provider. For decades, BMW has been one of our toughest competitors. We want things to stay that way. We're still competitors in terms of our vehicles. Nonetheless, we now want to work together as we take our mobility services to the next level. That way, we can offer our customers a complete package that ranges from car sharing to ride sharing, parking, and charging. We're also going to discuss how autonomous driving will change urban mobility. Our goal at Daimler is to put the first driverless taxis on the road in the early 2020s. All of our cars and those fleets will have electric drive systems. We flipped the switch to electric mobility a long time ago. At Mercedes, we will be offering at least one electrified variant in every segment by 2022. In North America, our smart cars are already completely electric. Europe will follow by 2020. At the same time, we are electrifying our vans, trucks, and buses. And we have many more plans, also going beyond our products. But the transformation to emission-free mobility is also a challenge to our business operations. An increase in electric cars is good for the CO2 balance, but it's not so good for our group's balance sheet, at least not in the short term. That's why we're not easing up in our drive for efficiency. We want to have a sustainable efficiency culture at Daimler. Als Karl Benz das Automobil erfand, sah er einen Weltmarkt für höchstens 5000 Fahrzeuge. Schon allein wegen des Mangels an geeigneten Chauffeuren. Heute sind mehr als eine Milliarde Autos, Lastwagen und Busse unterwegs. 2030 könnten es schon zwei Milliarden sein. Was heißt das für uns? Wir sind schon heute ein globaler Mobilitätsdienstleister. Wir bauen weiterhin faszinierende Autos und trotzdem vermitteln wir dir ein Ticket für die Bahn. Wir wollen keinen Stillstand und gehen mit höchstem Anspruch voran. Wir wollen weniger. Wir wollen mehr. Wir geben volle Kraft für Perfektion bis in die letzte Naht. 
bis ins letzte Byte. Wir bewegen Großes. Und natürlich Kleines. Wir denken an ein eigenes Auto. Und wir denken an kein eigenes Auto. Wir teilen gern. Aber wir teilen längst nicht alles. Wir lieben diesen Sound. Und mögen es auch leise. Hey Mercedes. Was möchten Sie tun? Bring uns zum Flughafen. Die Route wird berechnet. Wir setzen uns neue Ziele. Wir denken weiter. Weit über das Auto hinaus. Wir sind für dich unterwegs. Wir machen es für alle einfacher und komplexe Logistik effizienter. Wir wollen Sicherheit und wollen Freiheit. Wir wollen selbst fahren und wollen gefahren werden. Wir lieben die Tradition und leben für den Fortschritt. Wir erfinden Mobilität neu. Jeden Tag mit all unseren 285.000 Mitarbeitern. Karl Benz sagte auch, die Liebe zum Erfinden hört niemals auf. Daimler. Sehr geehrte Aktionäre, Shareholder Representatives, Meine Damen und ladies and gentlemen, ich begrüße Sie herzlich I welcome you most cordially to today's ordinary annual meeting of the shareholders of Daimler AG, which I now declare open. As the chairman of the supervisory board, it is my privilege to chair this meeting according to our articles of incorporation. I'd like to use this opportunity to also welcome our new major shareholder, Tenacious Company, and its owner, Li Shu Fu. We appreciate his trust in our company in our innovative strength and our long-term strategy. We would be pleased if uh, our new major shareholder had the same long-term interest in our company as our second largest shareholder, Kuwait Investment Authority, that has been a central shareholder, anchor shareholder, in fact, for already 43 years. Ladies and gentlemen, before getting down to business, let us honor those who have passed away. May I ask you to rise to your feet? Let us remember in silence so those employees and pensioners, as well as all those who felt close to our company who have passed away since our last meeting. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in financial year 2017, Daimler AG mastered diverse challenges in an outstanding way and produced a historic result. New records in volume, revenues, earnings and profitability. On behalf of the full supervisory board, and I'm sure also on behalf of you shareholders, I congratulate most cordially the board of management as well as all employees of Daimler AG. Uh, thank you for your untiring and passionate efforts. We are looking forward to shaping the future of this company hand-in-hand hand with you.
The Board of Management and the Supervisory Board would like to share the fruits of this uh, success with you again, dear shareholders. The proposed dividend payout to be resolved on by the annual meeting is uh, €3.65, the highest payout of our company. Uh, this proposal takes into account both the excellent results and the challenges of the future, as well as our intention to keep dividends at the same level. The total payout of almost 4 billion euros is among the highest of DAX companies, by the way. Today, Daimler is more successful than ever before. In the mobility industry, which keeps reinventing itself, however, even Daimler will have to undergo more fundamental changes to stay successful. And this is why I would like to address two critical aspects on our way into a new mobility era. For one, uh, there are far-reaching technical and social developments which change our industry in a fundamental way, and then there are our plans to realign and reorganize our group. On the first point, our company operates uh, currently in an environment which is marked by tensions caused by disruptive developments. From the internal combustion engine to electric drives, from vehicles owned to mobility services used as needed, from active to autonomous driving, and finally from analog to connected trips. Each of these areas on its own already constitutes an enormous technical challenge. It's our goal uh, to give a, a new shape to individual mobility by means of sustainable products and innovative services. The key to success will reside in closely connecting mobility concepts and drive technologies. In this transformation process, it is the role of the supervisory board to make sure that the company has all the means to be successful in the long term. Point two, the future project. Daimler becomes faster. That It's about reorganization, as you will know. Daimler becomes faster, more flexible, more digital, and that secures its strength going forward. This is one of the reasons why the first preparatory steps to strengthen the divisional structure by forming legally independent units were evaluated and initiated. The supervisory board firmly supports all those steps. For the time being, uh, neither the Board of Management nor the Supervisory Board of Daimler AG have made a decision to implement the new structure of the group. Should Board of Management and Supervisory Board opt for the implementation of the new group structure, this would require the approval of the annual meeting of shareholders of Daimler AG at the earliest point in time in 2019. Which concrete steps Daimler has taken to ready itself for the future and what the Board of management does to implement the strategy it has devised and which the supervisory board uh, supports, you will hear shortly from Dieter Zetsche. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fully aware that the outstanding results and the excellent preparation and investments into the future of our company are overshadowed by some less pleasant events from the past. There are the findings of the EU Commission in the truck antitrust proceedings and the settlement with the EU Commission in 2016, as well as uh, the pending court cases brought by uh, truck customers. Also, in the context of uh, diesel exhaust emissions inquiries, investigations, tests and proceedings are underway in the United States and Germany, among others. And the press has brought antitrust allegations against the German automotive industry. I'd like to remind you that the only case to have been concluded by the authority at this date is the truck case. We have received claims and complaints from customers who feel they were put at a disadvantage because of the conduct found by the EU Commission. In none of the mentioned uh, cases has any final ruling been made yet. Let me emphasize that your company has cooperated closely and in a spirit of trust with the authorities and continues to do so.
However, this may also mean that neither the Board of Management nor the Supervisory Board are in a position to give more detailed information in these matters as non-disclosure and confidentiality has been agreed on. I can assure you, though, that the Supervisory Board and the Board of Management have done everything within their power to shed light on the transactions and facts in question and, even more importantly, have taken precautions in the areas of organization, processes, and HR policy in order to ensure that such events will not occur again. The Supervisory Board fully assumed its responsibility to review the facts itself comprehensively. It also commissioned independent law firms for this purpose. The supervisory board drew on advisors to decide whether and to what extent former current members of the board of management might be held responsible and whether and to what extent such questions could be put aside for the time being in the light of the best interests of the company. The supervisory board assessed cases on the individual merits and made sure that there is no risk in the near future that a case might become statute barred. In order to assure you as our shareholders that the supervisory board was attending to its duties in each and every respect, we asked an independent expert in corporate law of excellent standing, Professor Habersack, to critically review our conduct in antitrust matters. In the beginning of 2018, he confirmed again that the supervisory board had attended to its duties thoroughly. His expert opinion can be found on the Investor Relations page of the Daimler homepage under Positions of the Management and Supervisory Board on the Counter Motions. Ladies and gentlemen, Daimler uh, promotes integrity with numerous initiatives, training courses, and a continuous dialogue with its 289,000 employees. Compliance is an indispensable part of this integrity culture. Compliance means to abide by laws and rules. Daimler promotes independent, i.e. self-regulated work and responsible action and behavior in its employees. This last fact is critical for our success. If the company wants to meet technical challenges in a highly agile and complex environment, it is the goal of the company to employ people in all positions who will do their jobs in line with the laws, rules, and voluntary company commitments in force. Employees who know their responsibility and the fundamental values of the company, who share these values, assert them, and act accordingly. As I thought these points were important for me to make, uh, permit me to refer you to the report of the Supervisory Board in the annual report for more details on the work of the Supervisory Board. The report begins on page 64, and you will also find the remuneration report and a detailed corporate governance report there. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will now have uh, to bring you up to speed on organization and formalities. Please note that the brochure you received at the entrance, together with your vote voting card block contains all information pertaining to the due contact of the shareholders' meeting, the voting procedure, as well as the appointment of a proxy in case you leave the meeting early. You are kindly asked to read this information carefully. Should you not have received such a brochure yet, you can pick up a copy at the Investor Relations stand in the entrance for yay. Mr. Iraqi, our notary public, who I'd like to introduce to you will authenticate the resolutions of this shareholders' meeting. If you want to submit statements concerning the notarial minutes, please turn to the notary for this hall, who is Dr. Krause, who is assisting Mr. Racky in the notarization. He is seated on your right in the first row in front of the stage here in the plenary. The presence area allowing shareholders participating to participate directly in the shareholders' meeting includes this plenary hall and all rooms that are open to you after accreditation. Please refer to the information brochure for further details. If you'd like to ask for the floor after the general debate on today's agenda has been opened, please proceed to the sign-up desk in this hall already at this point. There are no additional sign-up desks available today. Should you wish to submit a procedural motion, please put it down in writing on a request to speak form so that we can prepare ourselves. You will, however, still have to present your motion orally.
You can submit a request to speak as long as the list of speakers has not been closed yet. Please try to let us know nonetheless as soon as possible if you'd like to take the floor so that we know roughly how many speakers request the floor. Should you follow the shareholders meeting from another area other than the presence area, you will still have the chance to submit your request for the floor at the request to speak desk I'm here in the plenary. Present your statement after being called and submit statements to the minutes with a notary. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the members of the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board are all here today. Today's agenda, including the motions for resolution on agenda items 2 to 7 of the shareholders' meeting, were published in the Federal Gazette on the 16th of February 2018 with the convocation of this meeting and have been available on the company's website ever since. They are also available at the investor relations booth during the course of today. On item one of the agenda, I inform you that the annual financial statements of Daimler AG, the consolidated financial statements, as well as the condensed management report of the company and the group for financial year 2017, were audited by KPMG Wirtschaftsprüfungsgesellschaft Berlin, and that these were granted an unqualified auditor's opinion. On February 9, 2018, the Supervisory Board adopted the annual financial statements of Daimler AG and the group financial statements after its own review of these documents. The annual financial statements of Daimler AG are therefore approved. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now proceed to some staffing issues of the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board. At its meeting on the 10th of February 2017, Ola Kalenius was appointed as member of the Board of Management of Daimler AG, responsible for group research and Mercedes-Benz cars development for another five years, starting on the 1st of January 2018. We look forward to continuing our cooperation with Ola Kalenius. Research and development are two key areas in the automotive industry. His experience and expertise will allow Ola Kalenius to strengthen and expand Daimler's position as a technology leader. At its meeting on the 9th of February 2018, the Supervisory Board appointed Renata Rungobrunga as a member of the Board of Management of Daimler AG, responsible for integrity and legal affairs for another five years, starting on the 1st of January 2019. We're glad to be able to, kin to continue our successful cooperation with Renata Jungobringer. As an experienced lawyer and compliance expert, she's been shaping our company in remarkable ways, both in relation to strategic issues as well as in terms of our operative business. Having more than 25 years of international experience, she also prepares the cooperation for future regulatory challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now inform you about some staffing changes in the Supervisory Board. In March of 2018, the regular elections for employee representatives to the Supervisory Board took place. The term of mandate of any newly elected Supervisory Board members begins at the end of this shareholders' meeting. I'd like to extend a special welcome to two new faces among employees' representatives, Dr. Zabina Zimmer and Raymond Curry. Welcome to the Supervisory Board of Dime Lady. We're looking forward to working with you. With the end of today's shareholders meeting, the term of mandate of Andrea um, Young, um, Sari Baldov, and Director Jürgen Hambrecht as shareholder representatives in the Supervisory Board ends based on the recommendations of the nomination committee and as laid down in agenda item six. Um, Sari Baldov and Dr. Jürgen Hambrecht were put up as candidates for re-election and Murray Week um, as a first-time candidate for a Supervisory Board mandate, the term of mandate being five years respectively. Um, Sari Baldauf and Dr. Jung Hambrecht have been a great asset for the Supervisory Board due to their expertise in business and technology matters. So we would therefore be glad if we could continue the successful cooperation in the next, for, um, in, in the next few years. Marie Week holds a Bachelor of Science in Engineering, a Master in Computer Science, and a Master of Business Administration. 
She has 35 years of experience in various technical and executive positions at IBM in the areas of hardware, software, and cloud computing, and has been working as a general manager of IBM blockchain since 2017. Given her extraordinary experience, in particular in those fields of technology that will be crucial for the future of our company, Murray Week is outstandingly qualified for a Daimler AG supervisory board mandate. The recommendations of the nomination committee on the election of supervisory board members follow our new holistic qualifications profile for candidates in which aspects of the composition of the supervisory board are described. Please refer to page 211 of the Corporate Governance Report in the annual report for the detailed profile. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Andrea Jung, Jörg Spies and Walter Sanchez, um, whose supervisory board mandates will end with the end of this shareholders meeting. I appreciate your commitment and hard work as members of the supervisory board and your contributions to the well-being of this company. I would like to thank you on that on behalf of the entire board for that. And, of course, we'd like to wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, Daimler is a successful and strong company. This allows us to strengthen our core business while investing in new technologies and business areas. Starting from a position of strength, the company has initiated a profound process of change. Daimler is actively shaping the way to a new era of mobility. And Dieter Zetchen will now tell you more about it. Therefore, I'd like to pass the floor to him. Thank you very much.